Good day everyone, welcome to Science Lay. I want to start a new series on biochemistry, so stay tuned, subscribe, click the like button, share, and drop your comments. Now, today we'll talk on amino acids. What are amino acids? We'll know their names, we'll classify them, we'll know their structures, we'll talk on some terms like optical activity, how to number the carbons in amino acids, ampule lights, and isoelectric points, and I'll give you practice questions. Now, what are amino acids? Amino acids are the building blocks or monomers of proteins. There are about 300 amino acids, but 20 are naturally found in the human body. So let's talk on how to memorize the amino acids. I'm going to give you a mnemonic. So the mnemonic is GAV list C MAGA GAUP TTHP. I'll say it again GAV list C MAGA GAUP TTHP. So it starts GAV G for glycine. Beside them, you see that three letter abbreviation, she G L Y, GAV, G A A alanine, V, valine, list, L for leucine, I for isoleucine, S for serine, T for threonine, C, C for cysteine, MAGA, M for methionine, A for asparagine, G for glutamine, A for aspartic acid, GAV, C, MAGA, GAUP, G for glutamic acid. GALP, G-A-L-P, A for arginine, L for lysine, P for phenylalanine, T-T-H-P, T for tyroxine, the other T for trypta, sorry, tryptophan, H is tedine, and P proline. All except proline are alpha amino acids. You can see I put an asterisk on it. Then notice the three letter abbreviation. Isoleucine is not the first three letter, it's I-L-E. Then if you go to asparagine, it's ASN, not ASP. ASP is for aspartic acid. Glutamine, same concept, GLN. Right? Glutamic acid is GLU. Then I think that's all for there. So pause the video, take a pen and paper, write GAVLIS, SIMAGA, GAUP, TTHP. Try and fill it yourself before you continue the video. It will help you. So now we're going to classify amino acids by structure. And I'll give you this mnemonic. It's very important because most times when they're talking about amino acids, they will tell you mention an amino acid that is sulfur containing, mention an amino acid that contains an amide group. So with this mnemonic, it makes it easier. And the mnemonic is in line with GAV list. You list your GAV list, you list this mnemonic, you see what I'm saying. So the mnemonic is Sera brought hot soup at dinner because Ada ate ice cream. Sera simple amino acids it contains the first two of gavlis brought branching amino acid contain the next three of gavlis which is valine leucine isoleucine or hydroxy containing amino acids and examples of such amino acid are serine and threonine soup sulfur containing amino acid examples are cysteine and methionine at a might contain amino acid. Example are asparagine and glutamine. Dinner, dicarboxylic or acidic amino acid. Example are aspartate or aspartic acid and glutamate. Because basic amino acid. Example are arginine and lysine. Other aromatic amino acid. Phenylalanine, tyroxine. Eight, heterocyclic amino acid. Tryptophan, histidine. Ice cream, amino acid, which is proline. So you can see the GAV list, you can see its relationship with the mnemonic. So now there are some things you need to note before you start drawing amino acid. One, carbon is tetravalent. Valent. What do we mean? It can form four covalent bonds and requires four covalent bonds to be stable. Sulfur and oxygen are divalent, they can form two covalent bonds. Nitrogen is trivalent, it can form three covalent bonds. Hydrogen and halogens, which are group 7, are univalent. They can form only one covalent bond. So anytime you are drawing your carbon, you should try to balance it with four bonds or you balance it with hydrogen. So now let's draw some structures. Now this is the typical structure of an amino acid at physiological pH. Under amphilite and isoelectric point, I will explain this physiological pH term. So you can see clearly it has four components. The carboxyl end. COO minus the amino end NH3 plus the side chain. The difference between amino acid is basically the side chain. Then the alpha carbon is the carbon that is bonded to both the carboxyl end and the amino group. 
So all amino acids are alpha amino acids except proline. Simple amino acids. We have two members, glycine and alanine. You add hydrogen to the general amino formula to get glycine. You add carbon to the general amino formula to get alanine. The carbon is coval has one covalent bond, so it requires three more to make it four. That's why we add H3 to it. The next member is branched chain amino acid. Now, look at your carbon skeleton. Anyway, you see a red circle, you are supposed to put a carbon. In the carbon skeleton, there you draw the branched chain amino acids. Like valine, that's an inverted V, that's the skeletal structure of the branched chain. The first carbon requires one hydrogen, the other two requires three hydrogen. Leucine, in the general amino formula, you put the skeletal structure, you balance the carbon by putting the required number of hydrogen. Isoleucine, you draw the general amino formula, you put the same thing, you balance the carbon with hydrogen. Next family is hydroxy containing amino acids. Now this has a pattern. The first member you give it one carbon, the second member you give it two carbon. So the first member in this family is saving. So you draw your general amino formula, you add one carbon, then you bond it to OH because it's called hydroxy containing. Now the carbon there is bonded to two covalent bonds, so it requires two more hydrogen. So CH2OH. The next member is threonine. You draw your general amino formula, you put two carbon, but hydroxy prefers to stay on the first carbon. So you balance your carbon with the hydrogen. The next family is sulfur containing. Now in sulfur containing the same concept, following your GAV list, the members are cysteine and methionine. The first one, which is cysteine, you give it a carbon that you bond it to sulfur. Now I told you that sulfur is divalent. So since sulfur has one covalent bond, it will require one more hydrogen to be balanced. You balance the carbon up there with H2. The next member of the sulfur containing is methionine. Methionine is the second member, so you give it two carbon and you balance the carbons with H2. Then the two carbon will be bonded to sulfur. That's what it's called sulfur containing. Now it's called methionine because the sulfur is bonded to a methyl group, which is CH3. It might containing amino acids, asparagine and glutamine. Asparagine, you draw general amino formula, you add a carbon, then you add a amide group, which is CONH2. Glutamine, you draw the general amino formula, you add two carbons, you balance the two carbons, then you add the amide functional group, which is CONH2. Dicarboxylic amino acids, there are two members, aspartic acid or aspartate and glutamic acid or glutamate. The first one, the aspartic acid, you add a carbon, you add a carboxyl group, and that's aspartic acid. Next one is, you draw the general amino formula, you add two carbon because it's the second member of the group, you add the COO minus, and that is glutamic acid or glutamate. Following our new monique, we have gone very far. So we have brought us to add dinner because, and we add because basic amino acid. Now we have arginine and lysine. Arginine has a special group called guanidium. So, arginine, you draw your general amino formula, you draw C is 3CH2 plus the guanidium group, and that is arginine. Lysine, lysine, you draw your general amino formula, 4CH2 follows it, then an amino group. The amino group, the presence of the amino group that makes them to be called basic amino acids. The next one is aromatic amino acids. Aromatic, you know that there need to be a benzene group somewhere. We have phenylalanine. You know alanine, right? General amino formula with a carbon bonded to phenyl group, which is a benzene ring added to any substance called phenyl. So when you add the benzene group to the alanine, it forms phenylalanine. Note, because the carbon there is bonded to the phenyl group, it will not have three hydrogen but two hydrogen. Next one is tyroxine. Tyroxine is phenylalanine that has OH at its proper position. So you just draw back your phenylalanine and have OH. When you study essential and non-essential amino acid use, tyroxine is a non-essential amino acid, but it becomes essential when phenylalanine is deficient. Heterocyclic amino acids, these are cyclic compounds that contain nitrogen and phosphorus and other elements in their cyclic structure. Now tryptophan. Now, tryptophan has general amino formula bonded to a carbon, bonded to a benzene ring, bonded to a pentagonal shape that has nitrogen there. Histidine, general amino formula carbon to a pentagonal shape with two nitrogen in it. Finally, our amino acid, which is proline. Carbons in amino acid are numbered. 
and they are not bad using Greek letters. The first one, the carbon that is bonded to the amino and the carboxylic group is called the alpha. The rest, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. For instance, the structure of lysine is shown. Now, the amino group is bonded to the epsilon carbon, so you denote the position that in lysine, the X amino group is bonded to the epsilon carbon. Optical activity refers to the ability of a substance to rotate plane polarized light. Carbohydrates usually rotate the light to the right, that's why they are called dextrose rotatory. Why amino acids naturally rotate it to the left, so that's why they are called level rotatory in bracket L or a negative sign. Amino acids can exist as alpha light, that is, they behave differently in acidic solution, alkaline solution, and in neutral pH. Now, what are we saying? When an amino acid is found in an acidic solution, it is positive. It shows a cationic, it's in a cationic form. In, in an alkaline substance or in an alkaline solution, it is anionic. Why in a neutral like blood pH, which is called physiological pH 7.4, it is in a sweeter ion form. It contains both the positive and negative charge, which cancel out. At that point, it's referred to as isoelectric points. Thank you for watching this video. You can play with these questions. The answers are found in my website. Don't forget to like this video, drop your comment, share it to friends, help someone. Then subscribe to my channel so that I can be updated of my new videos I will release very soon. Thank you very much. I appreciate seeing you next week.